Throughout the years, there have been many video game companies known for top-notch quality and excellence, and we've seen games from a variety of companies so far on the show. But today's episode will be a review of an extremely important game from one of the most important companies of all time, the Big N themselves! Oh, oh, you thought I was referring to Nintendo. I'm referring to Namco! Wow! That's fantastic, Rentic! Let's go take a look! Namco, a shortening of Nakamura Manufacturing Company, was first founded on June 1st, 1955 by Masaya Nakamura in Tokyo, Japan. The company originally ran children's rides, but eventually expanded into coin-operated games in the 1970s. In 1974, Atari's Japanese distributor Atari Japan was struggling financially, and its owner Hideyuki Nakajima needed to sell it. He was originally going to sell it to Sega, but Mr. Nakamura was able to offer a higher bid than Sega, so Atari Japan was his. The success of Mr. Nakamura's Atari Japan deal inspired him to have Namco make their own games and sell them. So between 1976 and 1977, the company bought some chips from NEC and hired a bunch of software developers and designers. One of these designers was a young man by the name of Toru Iwatani. Mr. Iwatani originally wanted to design pinball machines at Namco, but due to patent-related issues, Namco couldn't let him do that, and he was assigned to designing video games. Luckily, Mr. Iwatani was able to make some sort of compromise by designing a video game with pinball elements. This game would eventually become Namco's very first video game, GB. GB was released in the Japanese arcades in October 1978, with Sega Gremlin releasing the game in the United States later that year. It didn't do as well as Namco hoped, but it helped them gain a strong foothold in the market and eventually led them to attain massive success with the smash hit Galaxian in 1979. GB would receive two sequels, Bombi and QDQ, that same year, and Mr. Iwatani would continue designing games at Namco, eventually creating Namco's most famous game ever, Pac-Man. So, to celebrate Namco's 65th anniversary, as well as to honor them as an important part of gaming history, let's take a look at that game that started it all, GB. Here it is! Well, this is it. Namco's very first video game. Not bad for a first try. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the game is a block-breaking game similar to Atari's Breakout from 1976, which was being distributed in Japan at the time by Namco, so it's plainly obvious that inspiration was taken from the Atari classic. Hell, Tomohiro Nishikado took inspiration from Breakout when he created Space Invaders, which released the same year as GB, so Atari had quite an influence on the world of gaming at the time. Anyway, GB is basically a cross between a block-breaking game and a pinball game. Two of my favorite things! The goal of the game is to bat a ball at the assortment of bricks laid out along the playfield, using the twin paddles in the center and bottom of the screen, and try to eliminate as many of the bricks as you can without letting the ball fall past the bottom paddle. You start out with a set number of balls, three balls when playing on the default setting, and losing all the balls results in a game over. Besides the bricks, you can rack up your score by hitting either of the two bumpers near the center of the playfield with the ball, or knocking the ball through the spin target between the two bumpers. The spin target can also be used to slow the ball down, which is very handy because the ball gradually picks up speed as you play, and it can reach an insanely fast speed, so the spin target definitely helps. There are even five light-up targets located below the center paddle that spell out Namco. Lighting up all five of these targets will add a times two bonus multiplier to the bonus you get after losing a ball. This is extremely hard to do, however, since shooting the ball over a target that's already lit will turn it off. It certainly took me quite a while to light up all five letters, so I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you like to spice things up. Knocking out all the bricks on either the upper left or upper right areas of the playfield will increase the point value of one of the bumpers from 10 points to 100 points and seals off one of the two holes at the bottom of the playfield. Knocking out all the bricks on the top area of the playfield will add a bonus to the spin target and knocking out all the bricks on either of the side areas of the playfield will earn you an extra ball. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get footage of either of these two things since they're extremely hard to pull off. For a game from 1978, GB is very aesthetically pleasing. The choice of colors is very fitting, it gives off a cooling vibe. Speaking of the colors, notice how the ball is changing colors. How is it doing that, you might be asking? Well, this game actually doesn't have color graphics. 
Chibi uses the old-fashioned technique of putting multicolored cellophane over the screen, which can only display graphics in black and white. You have to remember that most games at the time didn't use color graphics, so they had to use cheap methods like this to get around the hardware limitations. Thankfully, these methods work pretty effectively, especially here in GB. Being a simple block-breaking game, GB doesn't have much in terms of sound, just some simple bleeps and bloops, customary of the time when the game was made. But, it works very well. Thank goodness. So what are my overall thoughts on GB? It still holds up fairly well after more than 40 years and is definitely a good start for Namco's long history of quality video entertainment. Though it's fun in short bursts, it's still fun nonetheless, and definitely worth checking out, mainly for its historical significance. The thing that disappoints me is that Namco has never bothered making any home ports of GB or giving it any sort of re-release on modern consoles. It really sucks because being their first ever video game, you'd think they'd try acknowledging their roots in some capacity. Maybe someday we'll see a modern re-release of GB, but we'll have to wait and see. So GB gets an approval from me. Sorry if this review seems short, but I guess it's only appropriate since the previous episode of Andrew Reviews lasted nearly 25 minutes long. Damn. Well, anyway, expect another movie review for the next episode, unless I spontaneously change my mind. And as always, thank you everybody for watching. I'm Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later. Huh, I hit my head on the, hit my head on the wall, uh, but, but it, it didn't hurt, but I, I just thought I'd mention that.